Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. So uh, what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about visual finance and how to implement financial reports and custom reports inside ClickSense. And we're going to do that by going through a few different steps and going through a bit of a demo. So I'll guide you through the agenda here in just a second as well. The um, First of all, I just wanted to quickly introduce uh, Vislib as a company. If you haven't heard of us before, we create extensions for ClickSense, visual extensions mostly, uh, but also some more functional, like what we're going to talk about today with the finance extension. So take a look, look at our website if you want to know more. What we're talking about today is also the Climber extensions, which were recently acquired from Climber. So it has added to the total pack of extensions that Vislib has. But today we're going to focus on the finance and we're going to focus a little bit on the uh, different things that you can do around financial reporting. So when it comes to financial reporting, um, there, there are a few things that, that we need to consider. And if we just start looking at the agenda for today, we're going to start by going through the three steps that we can go to take to engage finance users in data. Typically, if we want to get people more data literate, want them more uh, intelligent around the business data, we want to engage them. And finance is actually a very interesting place to start. When I've gone through those three steps, I will do a demo. So I will go through an actual PL app and show you how that works and how we can interact with the data in that application. After that, I will go through how it's done. So a little bit on the components that we use and the different things that are involved in order to get a financial report going in ClickSense. Last but not least, we're going to do a Q&A. I expect there to be quite a few questions. There's always a few things that we need help to sort of know that we need to talk about. So please post your questions in the chat. Uh, we will monitor that and at the Q&A part of the session we will go through those questions and answer them as best as we can. We will also do a follow-up afterwards uh, if there is any questions that we left unanswered. So ask your questions. Don't be shy, just put it in the chat. Now, we're going to start. So let's talk about what we want to do with finance. Actually, our goal, when we talk to finance, our goal around ClickSense is that we wanted to engage our users to explore the data, to not just look at the reports, not just take that static data that they had before, but actually engage in the data. And the reason for that is that we want them to improve the data literacy. We want them to actually understand the data that they're looking at. So this is the goal of this little exercise and, and around how we get to the finance people in a company. The hows are three steps. So we're going to do it very simple. We're actually going to do a, a, an extra little step here in the beginning. So it's three steps, but first of all, there's a little bit of preparation. So the first thing that we're going to do is what I call deliver the imagined need. Because every time I meet with a finance department, the first question I get around ClickSense and about this new reporting tool or whatever it is that they're doing is that, okay, this is great, but can you please just develop something that looks and preferably works exactly like what I had before. But let's do that in this new cool tool, but do it exactly like we did it before. It's kind of backwards, but it's also the way that we people function and then think because we're comfortable with what we already have. So we need to start from somewhere where we're comfortable and that's usually exactly what we had before. So the first thing that we're going to do is just deliver exactly what we had before. So more or less just a normal table that looks just like a report. It's pretty exact looking. It's pretty much the same as any finance department would have. It has rows, it has subtotals, percentages, very common P&L table. And of course, when it comes, when I'm saying P&L here, this could just as well be a balance sheet or a cash flow report or some other type of report that, that is normally static to its nature. Now, what we're trying to do is make it a little bit more interactive, which brings us into the first actual step. So the first step is to allow user interaction. 
So rather than just having that static report, we need to allow the user to actually interact with the data. In Click, this is easy because we, we naturally click on things that we see once we've started using ClickSense. And this we can also do in the app. And again, I'll go through this in the demo in a little bit so, so you'll see exactly how this works. Now I'm just trying to sort of give you the idea of the different steps that we use. The second step is to actually add visualizations. And here is where I'm starting to scare people in finance quite a lot because now this is really scary. We're actually adding colored arrows in this chart. Um, it takes you a little bit away from just normal columns and numbers and, and adding something a little bit different. And this actually helps though because it gives a little bit of meaning to those numbers. It gives you maybe an indicator of where to start looking and maybe even add something more. Maybe add something like data bars which actually not just help you see that something is above or below your target, but it also shows you how much above or below target. So this first bar that we can see an actual versus last year is that this is a big bar. So this is probably where we should start looking. If we just had a green arrow here, we wouldn't know where to start looking. And of course, in this rather short PL, that's still easy to find. But in a larger PL, lots more KPIs, a lot more rows, then we need help to figure out where to start looking. If we take a closer look at that, this is the way that that looks. So you'd have a bigger bar if the number is bigger. So it's quite straightforward. It's just an indicator to show you where to start. So interaction was first step. Visualization was the second step. And the third step that we want to go through is actually to introduce collaboration. And when we introduce collaboration, what I mean by that is that we get people talking about the data. Preferably, we want people to talk about this when they meet by the coffee machine, but we also want them to talk about it in a more structured way. When we have financial reporting, we usually do month-end reports. And after that month-end report, we usually print it, write comments, and then send those comments back to someone, and then they put it together and send out a formal report of some kind. That is a fairly tedious and long process. So we wanted that to be quicker. So with the extension, we've done that collaboration piece a little bit easier than we would normally do in a sort of normal reporting structure. So with that, I've gone through the three steps, interaction, visualization, and collaboration. And I'm going to jump over and take a look at a small demo of how this looks in ClickSense. So you might have seen something uh, like this before. This is the one that I usually do demos on, simply because it's a good sort of normal, normal data set, which is not too complex. So what we're looking at here is now a normal P&L, um, actually very similar to our own setup, where we have consultation fee, license revenues, and maybe operating revenue uh, and operating earnings, and maybe a percentage of the operating earnings at one of the rows. So more or less the report-like structure again. Uh, this is now delivering the, the need. So this was the preparation, right? Now, the next step that we would have would be to start interaction. And here's where click becomes interesting because not only can we select and deselect months like we would normally do uh, and get the different results for those months very quickly, we can also, of course, change things like currency, uh, maybe have a different currency, maybe switch the comparison. We compare with compared to budget or compared to forecast, we can switch that around and the numbers change accordingly. We can also drill down into the data. So we can see the next level, which is project and we have country, and then we actually have a link to more information. So this row here can give you a link to an invoice or a link to a voucher or, or more information in some other system that you have. So all of the data here becomes a little bit more interactive but also in a sense that we can actually change the content of this table. So the dimensions that we have now is sort of the normal report, and then we have project. If we wanna change project here to account number, so maybe we're a finance person, we don't wanna see projects, we wanna see accounts. So we change to account number, then we get account number at the second level. And this can all be done by the end user. So you can have a little bit of 
different reports in one, but you can still keep the same structure and we know that it's still doing the right calculation while we're making it a little bit more interactive. And this can be done for every single dimension in this. So now we're seeing a, a little bit longer version of the PNL. If we wanted a shorter version, then we can do that. So we just switch the report row to maybe report row group, and then we group those together. And we can have any number of these different PNL setups or hierarchies in the PNL that we can help drill through and up and down. We can also change the top dimension. So let's say instead of company, we wanted something like year, month, then we can have that. So this is allow this allows us to have a more interactive experience with the PNL. And we can, of course, also have multiple different layouts and designs. So if you wanted a design where we don't have a top dimension, we just have lots of expressions going across or measures going across, then we can do that. So here we have seven different expressions. We could, of course, have quite a lot of expressions. Actually, we could up to have, have up to 10,000 expressions going right here. Probably wouldn't make any sense, but we could. When we're talking about also uh, maybe understanding sort of the how limitations here, if you want to drill down, you can drill down to five different levels here. Um, so, so that should be a lot, but then you can also have an unlimited number of alternative dimensions. So here we can have any number of alternative dimensions for each and individual row or level of this pivot table. So that should hopefully be enough for, for most of you. So that was interaction, that was the first step. Now, if anyone remembers what I said five minutes ago, which is probably unlikely, but anyway, the next step is visualizations. So when we've done that, the normal report, then now we wanna sneak in some visualizations. Now we wanna make sure that people understand that, okay, so we could go a little bit more visual. So I didn't wanna show that, we want to show this one. So with visualizations, uh, we can actually do a little bit more. So we could add those data bars. And as you see, those data bars are applied not only to the first level, but they will go across even on the second level. So as we drill down into the data, not only do we find what was at that higher level, but we can also see what's happened at the next level of that data. So everywhere where we drill down, we still have those visualizations with us and we can keep going to get a more visual view of what we're doing. So that was visualizations. Um, the, uh, what we can also do actually, when it comes to visualizations, we can do quite a few more fun things. So if we go a little bit crazy, then probably adding more like the normal business intelligence analysis type of visualizations could definitely be done even in an application that normally would be around finance. The financial numbers are obviously tied to the business and, and what the business does. So adding a screen like this with more KPIs and visualizations is actually not a bad idea when it comes to finance, even though it's very rarely done. And we could even do very odd things like adding something like a Sankey chart to understand how data, to understand how um, the value has, has changed. So basically what what has changed between budget and forecast. So if we want to see actual versus budget in this case, now we can see that Norway and Sweden has have a, had a negative impact uh, between budget and forecast and actuals. Uh, and Netherlands has have a positive impact, but we can also see things, what has been changing. So if we move to the other end of that, we can see that the biggest change has been within revenue. So when it comes to, to cost, that has had some negative impact, uh, but also the revenue uh, or lack of revenue has actually been a larger negative impact. And this type of visualization obviously wouldn't be what you would start with, and it would probably be um, a lot more complex than most people are used to when it comes to visualizations. But once you explain this to someone and go through it, it actually makes a lot of sense, and it makes it a lot easier to figure out exactly what's going on in your PL as opposed to a table, which isn't really that easy to read because to try to do the same information in a table, you have to do quite a big table, which would be very difficult to read. So that was visualizations. So moving on to collaboration. So taking a look at the third step of that, which is collaboration. When we look at collaboration, uh, we can still take a look at this sort of normal PNL, but we do it from 
a commentary perspective instead. So when we're looking at comments, we can actually integrate comments into the PNL. So as you can see on this little dot here, when I click on that, I get all the comments that I've posted. And I could put a post new comment in here, or I could just go ahead and maybe I could do this so you can see that it changes. We have a comment here on February, and this comment says that lack consultants, but better this month. Okay, uh, need more hires. Add that as a comment, and then that pops up as a comment. And in real time, everyone who has access to this report and access to the comments can see those comments. So we don't have that waiting time. We don't have that time where someone put all these things together. We do that straight away, instantaneously in the app instead. We can also show those comments. So if we want to go through them, browse through them, we want to search, we want to list only those from a certain user, uh, we can actually do those type of selections as well. And as you can see here, the comment is tied to this row. It's also tied to the time period. So depending on how we set this up, we can tie it to a time period or we can tie it to something else. We can also connect comments to things like countries. So if I put, click on Norway here, for instance, you will see that I don't get any comments. That's because I haven't commented anything on Norway. And the comments are connected to those other fields. So you'll, you not only get the comments in a static report, you get the context of where those comments were put and what the selections were. Still very flexible. So you still have the ability to switch between budget and forecast. And obviously when I switch, switch to forecast, if you were following here, what happens is that when we switch from budget to forecast, as you can see, the comments change. And that's because these comments are not connected to budget comparison. They're connected to the forecast comparison. And we have those for the different months. So you can go back in time. You can take a look at January. You can take a look at February. When you're later on in this year, you can still see what has been going on earlier. As we're looking at this page, a couple more things that, that maybe should have mentioned when we talk about visuals is that it also helps adding things like KPIs, adding the KPI with a trend. So we have EBITDA over time. This gives us an idea on not only what EBITDA is now, but also how that has been going over the last few months or weeks or whatever time period that we select. So those type of simple visualizations actually help engage the users a little bit more in, in the data. And these little selections up here, they're done with what we call a selection bar. And in the selection bar, the reason for having that there is that mostly when I talk to finance, they really want to see all the time exactly what months are selected, not just four months out of 12, but they want to see that this is January, February, March, and April that are selected and nothing else, because it gives them a better idea on exactly where they are in their analysis right now. So that was the visualizations uh, piece. And if we uh, take a closer look at something else, which is a little bit around the dynamics of this, and I also promise to show a little bit around custom report uh, and how that ties into this. Because in addition to the finance report, we what usually happens when we've gotten users through these phases where, where they're interacting and, uh, with the data, which now has more visualizations and they're actually starting to collaborate on the data, they, they come up with their own questions. And those questions might or might not be related to something that they can show directly in a normal PNL. So what we can do instead is create dynamic reports. And these type of dynamic reports or custom report, as we call the extension, is that you can select the dimensions and the measures that you want as a user. And it's still safe in the way that this is defined by a developer uh, or a super user that knows exactly what dimensions and measures work together. And then the user can decide that, okay, so this is by project and country, but I don't really want to see this by project. I just want to see it by country. Then you can just deselect project and you'll get the list of country and you'll get the consultation fee, budget fee, and maybe licenses. But maybe I don't want to see licenses here. Maybe I want to see something like consultation fee versus target instead. Then I can get that as a separate column. Uh, and maybe I want totals. Then I can just add totals to that and I actually get the whole totals. These types of small reports, you could create a million of these reports 
and it would cost a lot to maintain and manage. But instead, we can now create one data set that the user, even with minimum skills, can still access and change. And you can not only see this in like a straight table, you can also change it to a pivot table, you can do the same type of analysis here and maybe do this one by year. So we add year, then we can drag and drop year over here and we can see this on a yearly basis. If we now deselect year, we'll see the two different years that we have here and we'll get the data the way that we want it. We can also change this to something else. Let's remove that again. Let's take a look only at here and then we'll see the two different years next to each other in the combo chart. And we'll see consultation fee budget versus consultation fee, and then we'll see the fee versus target. And here, this one we can actually place on the secondary axis. So we can do that, but we can change it into the secondary axis, and then that will pop up here instead, and you'll have a secondary axis. So we can change the visualization. And then the point of this is that we give the control of the reporting to the user. So rather than spending a lot of time creating fixed reports, we actually give that power to the user and hopefully without confusing them too much. So they should still be able to easily navigate this and understand what they're looking at. And since we have all the measures here, they're pretty much self-explanatory, right? So we have all of those, but we can also have explanations. So if you see that little pop-up, what happens is that we actually pick up on the master item description, which means that we can put a short or longer description on each one of these measures to actually help the user also understand how those measures are calculated and where they come from. So for each one of these, we do have an explanation for the user so that they can get to that. So this type of customer reporting fills a couple of purposes. It fills both the purpose of actually uh, making it easier to maintain, but it also keeps the user inside the analytics tool. And the advantage of keeping them inside the tool is that they can handle larger data volumes and they won't make any wrong calculations because they're, they're fixed already inside the custom report. By the way, the information on the different measures also come up through that info button, so you can get that type of visualization over there as well. So that was the custom report as well. So now we've gone through sort of what we would do to create a normal PNL setup and how we would work with that. One thing here, which of course is important to these users, uh, is that, okay, that's all great, but I understand you want to keep me in the tool, but I want to export this. I want to put it in Excel. Well, yes, you actually can do that. So we can still export, we put it into Excel. And when we do that and export this to Excel, we actually get that not only to Excel, but we get it to Excel with the proper number format. So this export will look exactly like it did in the finance report with the correct background colors, borders, number formatting, and still the actual numbers in detail uh, in the different columns when you export it to Excel. You can, of course, also export it to an image or do something else with it. So you can export it to a PDF or image and, and paste it into something else. Maybe you want to put this in a PowerPoint uh, or do something to that extent. Then you can do that. So that was the bit around the demo. So now a little bit to how this works. So the way that this works is that what you've seen now and, and what I've shown you is mostly sort of the front end of that. But the interesting bit is, of course, also what are we doing behind the scenes? Uh, how are we actually creating this? Because there's a little bit of logic involved here as well. Uh, the how of that is that we, we get the data from a database. Obviously, we have some sort of transactional data. We have a general ledger uh, with information on, in this case, the PL data. Then we have an Excel file where we define what accounts go into what row. This little template, which is here in Excel, that's what we supply included in the product as part of uh, the creation process. You fill this out. It's fairly straightforward. It just has rows. It has a basically account from and to, and, and there are some more things that you can do with that to actually help in, in 
just importing whatever structure you want in your report. To sort of generate this in the end, we of course need to define what goes where. In combination with that Excel file, we have a template script. So a default script that handles the full logic of this Excel and translates it into a proper data model for ClickSense. And it creates a rather simple data model. Uh, and the point of that is that we want to keep it simple and we want to keep it efficient because we see a lot of bad implementations of PLs as well, which don't perform because they've created bad data models or we're doing many types of calculations or we're doing some things that are, that are too complex. What we're doing here is very straightforward and actually more or less the best practice around how to build PLs in Click View. Uh, that, that we used like 15 years ago that was still the same type of structure. Obviously it's been improved quite a lot since then and we made the templates easier and the scripting more complex and better, but the whole idea is still there and still the same because it is something that does perform well and it makes it rather simple to in the end implement it into the PL table extension uh, or, or the finance report table extension in ClickSense. So creating as few uh, measures as possible and, and making those as simple as possible. So data, Excel, script template, creating a data model, and then bringing that into the actual um, PNL table. This whole package comes with the demo app, so you can actually have this um, in a, in a demo. Uh, already today you can actually download this from the Vislib website. So if you go to the Vislib portal and uh, log in to, to the Vislib portal, what you'd have to do is you go to the front page and then you'll see that you can trial the product. And when you've done that, you can actually go in and download and try uh, the uh, Climber Finance report just by going in and Sorry, was there a question? Okay. Uh, um, so you can actually go in and you can download and you will have, uh, as a trial, you will have access to the online version of the finance report and there will be a demo app with some data. And we did get some question here earlier on, on the data. And yes, there is supposed to be included data with this as well. So you can actually run a reload and trial uh, the extension and, and play with it a little bit to get a feel of how this works. It also comes with a readme, of course, so that you can uh, hopefully understand how to set that up. So that's a little bit on the on the technology of how, how that works. Um, to give you an, an idea on sort of the, the structure of this, it's also, of course, we're part of the uh, Click TED program, which means that this is an uh, extension that's certified and trusted by Click. And that goes for actually both of the extensions that I showed, the custom report and the finance report. Both of those are trusted and uh, tested by Click. So that's an important thing to know, as is the same actually with quite a few of our other extensions. And when it comes to the Vislib extensions, we do follow the same development structure for all of them. So even if all of them hasn't really gone through the certification by click yet, they should still all be of the same type of quality and follow the same structure that we would need to have to be certified in the TED program. So. One more thing about this is, of course, how we sell this and how this works. So, um, obviously, I'm not going to go through th the full thing on, on pricing and, and, and models, just to give you a little bit of understanding how the different packs work, uh, is that we do have the Visible Library or the Claims Climber Self Service package as the foundation. And when you have one of those, you can add the finance report as an add on to those foundation packs. And we are soon have something coming around collaboration. Hopefully you've seen a little bit about that already. Uh, so there'll be more coming around that. But these are the different packs. Uh, so if you have Visit Library today, then you can add Finance Report as an add-on to the Visit Library. So it is a separate product, um, but you need the Visit Library to, to have it. 
Okay, uh, so um, that brings us into the QA part of this session, and hopefully we do have some questions. Um, so let's see what we have. Actually, Juste, I don't see any questions so far. Can you confirm if you're seeing any questions? Uh, yes. Just a moment. I'll send them over to you. Um, ah, perfect. Something's obviously not quite right with what I'm seeing here. So I figured there would be some. Ah, oh, now there's one. You should so, see something um, in the chat. Yeah, now I do see a little bit in chat, but I only see things from you, unfortunately. So, but I'll, I'll, that's fine. So, where does the extension store the comments? Good question. Um, so, the comments are stored in typically in a, in a SQL database, but we do have a few different options there. So, you can use any SQL database, or you could actually use MariaDB, uh, something like that. You could even use a Postgres database. So, uh, the database that ClickSense has. Uh, is actually Postgres, and you could actually use that database. So unless you have large data volumes, then that would work just fine. So that's how the extensions are stored, and that's done through a backend service, and it actually also handles the security around that. So of course, you only see comments that you're allowed to see, and it respects things like sex and access um, in the security. Um, so uh, access to comments separate from having access to the app yes so we can actually set up the the, the comments completely separately uh to to how you have access to the app so we can have lots of users have access to the app but then only a few users have access to comments and then within those uh, users that have access to adding and reading comments we can also decide on what different areas they're allowed to comment so if you're for instance responsible for norway you could be allowed to only post comments on Norway. And if you're a manager, you might be allowed to post comments on all countries and maybe also read comments from every single country. So there is a structure for that type of uh, security uh, built into the comments piece as well. But it, but it sort of relies on, on the ClickSense security. So you ha have some of the setup done there in the QMC. Um, so does it have to be an Excel file? Yeah, the, when I assume that when we're asking, does it have to be an Excel file? I assume that is around the template. No, it doesn't have to be an Excel file. Uh, the reason for having the Excel file is that we we wanted to provide a simple template for everyone to start with. And so far we've seen that around 90% of all customers actually use the Excel file and are happy with the features that they get there. Then we have a few sort of exceptions uh, where, the customers want to build their own database and usually they end up with something that's similar to the Excel but they can also read this from their ERP system. Uh, the only thing is that they usually need to enrich that data a little bit so uh, what they do then is they read the, maybe the groupings of accounts into rows, they read that from the ERP system and then they add a little bit um, to that from an Excel or from another database. Uh, we've had someone even set up something like a web page where, where they handle that. The idea of the Excel and, and the idea of having that separate is that we also want the finance users to be responsible for that type of logic. So in most cases, we actually use the administ move the administration of uh, that setup, of the P&L setup. We move that from IT to the finance department so that they can actually handle it. Um, next question is, can you also generate cash flow and balance sheet reports? Um, uh, yes, absolutely. It's the same thing. So those type of reports are very similar to creating a P&L. Typically, the only difference for a balance sheet would be the actual calculation of the number, which would have to calculate everything up until a certain point to make a balance. But the structure for the report is exactly the same. So that's very straightforward. How flexible is the finance report when it comes to updating the reporting hierarchy and editing to your own company standard? Well, uh, you can do any hierarchy. So that's there are no real limitations to the hierarchy. Uh, I mean, if you want to have common, if you want to have totals on top, you can have totals on top. If you have, want to have lots of different KPIs uh, in, sort of mixed in with the others, you can move those around. 
you could also change the design and layout. So if we want to have maybe even like a dark layout here, we can do that. So so we can completely change how this looks and feels by by changing the different colors and backgrounds and borders. So so it should be quite flexible. Um, difficult question to answer more specifically, but yeah, you have lots of options on how to change it. Um, the next question was also about the balance sheet. So yes, that's possible. Uh, does the PNL click script? Does the PNL click send script part of the license? Pack? Yeah. So you get the you get the script as part of uh, of this as well, and and we do support that. So we help you if you're using the standard script. We will we will help you understand if something is not working the way that you expect it to do in the standard script. Of course, there there are some limits to that when it comes to your very if you have very specific things around. Uh, how you want to build your PNL, but yeah, we do support the, the script as well as part of, of the subscription. Uh, so, how to put subcategory headers in a transposed pivot table, like grouped measures? Yeah, well, that's more or less. So, let's see if I can pull that up again. Um, so, grouping measures. Now, here, uh, here is some. Here we have grouped measures based on a group. Uh, so two different ways of doing this. You have uh, here we have groups, so we have everything uh, in this year. And if I change that year, then this group actually changes to to a different year. Um, this is set up in the settings, so I can show you a little bit how the the sort of settings panel look at this. And it's very much like a normal uh, PNL, a uh, normal uh, ClickSense object. So uh, we have a few settings, but if we start looking at the uh, data here, we have the different dimensions, then we have the alternative dimensions, then we have the measures. And when we look at the measures, uh, for each individual measure, uh, we have this group. And now this is the group that I have here, which is 2019. So here I've grouped my measure by this group. And then for budget, I actually put the same group, uh, and that means that they're grouped together. And then if I drill down, uh, scroll down a little bit here, I go to actual last year, then that group will be different. So we have a different type of grouping. This means that what I used to do in ClickView and used to do before was actually create some sort of like fake dimensions and, and fairly complex things just to do this. Now I just put the group in and then I can group my measures any way I want. If I want to group them by a dimensional value instead, then I do what I did here on the uh, other sheet. Let's see if I have that here. So let's pick that up. Uh, that should probably be here. Uh, yeah. So if we take a look at this one, this has a year month at top, which is a dimension, and then it will group each in, uh, each one of these measures into that dimension. Uh, so we get all the three different measures for uh, January and then for February and so forth. So that's just a small setting that decides whether you do have a top dimension or don't have a top dimension. So it's just one setting saying yes or no to having a top dimension and then it uses that as the grouping of the uh, measures. So I hope that made sense. Um, so I, uh, I'm i going through these a, a little bit longer. So I was expecting a, a lot of questions. So this is all still within uh, the time that we have. So I'll, I'll keep answering a few uh more uh so i need the visible library first and then also purchase the custom report yes i can't just purchase the custom no for now we what we've set the way that we set this up is that you you start with the sort of visual you start with the the library or you can actually start with the self-service pack the self-service pack also has the custom report. So you could also start with that. So if you're looking for the sort of minimal uh, starting implementation, then you would start with the self-service pack that has this and the selection bar and the KPIs that you typically do need to sort of create a good PNL app. So then you buy this uh, self-service pack and then the finance report on top of that. So correct, you do need one of the two. You need either the visit library or the climber self-service uh, before you can buy the finance report. But if you have any more questions around, more specifically around pri pricing, just do contact us, and, and the salesperson will will help you out and, and sort out exactly what the cost will be for for you as a, as a company. 
So uh, when there is a new comment on the PNL, is there a way to get an alert of a new comment when it's added? Well, not more than what you saw on the screen, right? So the alert in this case is just the uh, the actual pop-up. So for this, we don't have uh, anything else than this just popping up. Um, what you saw flashing by quickly before was uh, our solution around collaboration, where we're actually adding comments to all different objects. Uh, and with that solution, you can also notify someone when you're doing a comment. So this might very well be in the future of the finance report as well. But for now, the only type of alert you get is that there is a, there is a comment. Um, so refresh of the comments, do you need click talks to refresh? No, so that's the whole point here. We don't need to refresh. We don't need to update the click app because the comments are uh, read in straight from the SQL server in real time. So there is no reload delay or anything like that. That's a really good question though. I probably didn't explain that properly. So no, there is no reload required to get the comments in. However, if you want to read the comments and read them into a different app or read them into a report, then you can, of course, read those comments from the database uh, into any Click app or, or any other system for that matter. So you, you can collect those comments. They're stored in a fairly simple format in, in a SQL database. So shouldn't be any problem reading them out from there if you need to. Um, so, uh, customers who already have Vislib package extension need to buy something or just download it. No, so you can just, you still need to, if you have the Vislib package, uh, the, the Vislib library as it's called, then uh, you still need to purchase the finance report separately. It's a separate product, uh, but you can download the trial and you can start trialing it. So that you can do without a license. Um, but if you want a subscription to this, if you want it supported, uh, and if you want the full features of this in the future, then you will have to, to pay the subscription for the finance report separately. So, um, Yeah, I saw something on the transactions QVD file corrupt and download. So yeah, we need to fix that. I'll need to take a look. Uh, we weren't aware it has been working. So something has probably gone wrong. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, Download a link of the demo. Uh, we won't give you exactly this demo. Uh, what you actually get when you go on the web page, uh, when you download the app from the portal, you do get a demo app. It's similar to the one that I just showed you. It's just uh, a little less complex and a little bit less data, just to make it a little bit easier to understand and grasp exactly how it works. So we won't be sharing this specific demo app, but we're sharing a, an easier version of that, which should still be enough to get you started and then sort of explain most of the things that you need to understand. There's also a readme and everything, so you will be able to read those and to understand what you should do. Uh, so again, the visual finance package is licensed separately. Yes, it's licensed separately. Um, Limit to the number of comments. No, there's no limit to the number of comments. Uh, what we're seeing is that as long as we're in a few hundred comments, we don't have any issues with performance. When you're getting to things like thousands of comments, then we need to consider more things around performance. And, and we'll probably be doing a few improvements on that on our end. But if you do really, really big implementations of this, of course, if you need to collect a lot of comments, then th that is a consideration. But for normal use cases where you have a few few hundred comments every every month or something like that, then performance shouldn't be an issue even on a relatively simple database server. So it's more up to the database server how quickly it responds to anything else. So there's no strict limit. It's just around performance. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's, see, let's browse through this around, uh, and yes, you can have minus figures in with red, red brackets, so you can do the US formatting of this uh, properly, of course, yes. Uh, and all the yeah, and all these lines are working as filters, so you can do selections here. So if you want to select only support and then drill down to that, you can do selections. So yes, those are filters. Um, 
what is the top object that you're using for filters? Yeah, this one here is the selection bar extension. So that's the climber selection bar, uh, also available for download on the Wislib site. So, but then you have to go into what you call the self-service pack. So let's pick that page up again. So if you go in here and you download on self-service, then you will find the custom report, container, KPI, and also the selection bar. And this selection bar is the extension that I'm using at the top there. Um, so let's see, there's actually a few more comments and questions. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Um, so many versions of a forecast. Yes, you can definitely do that. So if you want multiple versions of the forecast, I've used the radio buttons here to switch between budget and forecast because it's demo friendly. But yes, I mean, you could have a drop down here with 50 different versions of the forecast and compare to that, or you could put more columns in and actually compare to multiple forecasts. Uh, we've also had solutions where you can switch the actual towards to a budget so you can compare budget to forecast and get the difference between those so those things are relatively straightforward to build it's more a matter of how complicated that becomes for the user to use but yeah that's definitely possible and definitely something that's done um, and here's again the question around the PNL script being used without the Excel file. Yes, you can. You can actually build this completely without our script and completely without the Excel file. There are instructions on how to format these rows because it they, they needs a little bit of formatting, but you can do that yourself. So if you have good scripters, you can definitely do it yourself. It's nothing stopping you. Uh, we don't force you to use our stuff. It's just that we think that it's helpful, hopefully. Um, so that should should be a positive thing. Uh, so can the visualizations pick up data directly from Google Cloud Big Query tables? No, not today. We're still going through the the ClickSense uh, engine, so we're picking up data from ClickSense. So that's it. Of course, you could in the background with Click, you could pick data from Google and put it into this, but not directly into this extension. No. Uh, do you need a separate SQL instance server? No, you don't need a separate one. As long as you have one that has enough power, that should be fine. It's not usually not a very power-hungry uh, instance collecting a few comments back and forth, so that should be fine. Uh, working with all click versions, uh, what I would like to say probably from, oh, I don't have the exact one that we do support here, but I think that anything from June 2018 should probably be fine. Uh, so, so uh, like a year back should probably be fine right now, and probably further than that. But at, at least that. Um, an on-prem version? Yes, there is an on-prem version. It depends on your license. So, if you have a license uh, with on-prem, then you can have it on-prem rather than having the online one. And mprinting, uh, yes, everything here works with mprinting apart from the Excel export, which mprinting does not support. mprinting does, um, does not support third-party exports, so we can't do an Excel export with mprinting, but we can print images and we can print this whole page. If you want to print that to a, to a report, then, then we can do that, but we can't do it to Excel in mprinting, then we have to do it manually. Um, it's one of the limitations of mprinting, actually. We're talking to Click about that and trying to get them to, to help us a little bit, and hopefully that will sort itself out. But for now, that's the limitation that we have. Um, five more minutes of questions, and then we uh, have to finish up. But um, so, um, we'll customers be able to work through Vizlib partners to get the specific demo. Uh, yeah, we can also do demos, uh, but some of the partners are now being um, enabled. So we've started enabling a few partners on uh, the finance report. Uh, so there will be both. It will be both us and partners going forward. Uh, do we have a client that's using SBase as a source of data? I'm sure we do. I just don't have an example. Um, most, I mean, it's that's more around a click scripting bit. So it doesn't really matter for the extension what type of source data that we're getting. Uh, it's still financial data, and financial data is fairly straightforward. So that should be okay. 
Uh, how can I add my own calculated measures? Well, you can add any measures you want. So if you want to have, well, any type of calculation, just add it like you would add a normal uh, ClickSense calculation. Uh, something about the price. Uh, please contact us uh, through the support and we'll direct you to a salesperson to talk about the price uh, rather than me trying to explain that here. Uh, does the report refresh with the live like connection? Yeah, uh, it does. Uh, that's probably the easiest answer to that. Uh, so it, it doesn't require a lot of time to refresh. And uh, we can toggle between with or without comments. Yeah, well, the thing is that normally you put comments on a more, uh, maybe on a separate tab, but you could also have this inside, for instance, a container where you have the comments in one of the containers and the other one on, uh, uh, or the other tab, which has everything else. Actually, one thing with the comments is that when we have comments enabled, we're disabling that whole uh, dynamic bit here on the left where we could change dimensions, simply because that would be super confusing if you could change all the different dimensions and at the same time try to comment. You can still have comments on different levels, but then you have to put them inside a container and, and select between the different ones instead. So it's more like how you would probably work with this. Uh, you, you would probably put it into different reports. Um, so uh, the, there is uh, when it comes to container actually the, there's one thing to, to note there is a new uh, container uh, just being released from us so take a look at that that actually has uh, some interesting features what we call grid features where you can put multiple objects inside the container so, so do take a look at that as well if you're into uh, containers um, Yes, that about concludes the questions. Um, so what I would probably want to do now is just to wrap up a little bit. There are a few final words and uh, that I'm gonna have to, uh, to finish up. So that was QA. Uh, then uh, just a few things coming up next. So we do have a webinar with Click uh, on June 12th. So if you wanna see more, there is a, a webinar together with Paul Van Zicklin from Click and uh, David Anderson from Climber uh, on the finance function and how you work with these type of features. So uh, a related seminar, webinar that might be interesting, this one coming up June 12th. Uh, we do have our Vizlib monthly webinar uh, coming up very soon as well. So take a look at that. That's something that it's really interesting if you have the Vislib extensions, you should miss that. We will remind you through emails as well. So that should also be, uh, you shouldn't be able to miss it, but just to make sure. And of course, we have released the May release for Vislib extensions. Um, so uh, that's out now and it does have support for ClickSense April 2019. So you do have support for the latest version of ClickSense. Uh, we're of course already working on the June uh, release for ClickSense, so that's also coming up. And as I mentioned, you can download from our Wizlib user portal, so go in there. And I did get a reminder from Juice to here, this is on June 25th, so uh, thank you for that. So just so you don't miss your webinar, June 25th, mark that date and mark the 12th. And that's about it. So. I'm done. Uh, thank you very much for listening in. I'm getting some thank yous in the comments as well. Thank you for that. So uh, everyone have a great day and thank you very much.